The Hall of Fame results are out, and no, Andrew Jones is still not in the Hall of Fame somehow, even though he's the best defensive center fielder of all time. However, he is getting much closer, and signs are pointing to the fact that he could get in soon. Scott Rowland does get in. We'll talk about the Hall of Fame voting results. We'll also discuss Chip Carey leaving as the Braves play-by-play -play announcer and who could replace him, and Ronald Acuna Jr. going deep. In the Venezuelan Winter League, we'll discuss that. Also, the Braves' Zips projections are out. We'll go over that as well and just how high they are on the Atlanta Braves going into the 2023 season. So, a lot to get to on this episode of Locked On Braves. So, let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves. Your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani, and you can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. Always enjoy hearing from you, the listener, and try to make this show as interactive with you as possible. Make sure if you're new that you subscribe on YouTube. And if you're watching this video there, hit that thumbs up button as it does help support the show a ton when you do that. Thanks as always for making Lockdown Braves your first listen of every day. We'll be getting back to five days a week here before too long as spring training is just a couple of weeks away. Before we get into today's busy episode, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the new official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And we do have a full episode on this episode on this edition of a Locked On Braves podcast. We're going to talk about the Hall of Fame results. Scott Rowland getting in. Andrew Jones creeping in the right direction. Billy Wagner getting close as well. We'll discuss Andrew Jones' chances of getting in in the next couple of years. We'll also talk about Chip Carey in the void that is there for the, in the Braves TV booth and who could be replacing him. We'll discuss Ron Acuna Jr. and his big home run in the Venezuelan Winter League that uh, drew some attention for uh, his celebration afterwards, and perhaps he's done there as well and ready to prepare for the upcoming season. And we'll get into the Braves' Zips projections as well over at Fangraphs. But let's start with the Hall of Fame voting results. Scott Rowland is the only player who was elected in on the ballot with just 76.3% of the vote. 75% is required to get in, so just barely got in on this one. You're not familiar with Scott Rowland's game, a Rookie of the Year winner, seven-time All-Star, eight-time Gold Glove winner, 2006 World Series with the Cardinals, one Silver Slugger, 70.1 career war in 17 big league seasons, mostly with the Phillies and Cardinals. He will join Braves legend Fred McGriff as part of the 2023 induction class. So those two will get announced in July. Scott Rowland's career, not all that different than Andrew Jones. He had a couple of better years on the back end to make his overall numbers a little bit better. But Scott Rowland was a player, you know, when I was coming up watching, you knew him for his glove and how slick he was at third base with that glove. But he also, you know, was a middle of the order hitter. So again, not too different from the career that Andrew Jones had. And just looking at the Hall of Fame voting results, you see Scott Rowland, 76.3%. Todd Helton, not far behind, 72.2%. Billy Wagner, 68.1%. And then Andrew Jones at 58.1% gets a big boost. Gary Scheffel there at 55% as well. Carlos Beltran at 46.5%. A lot of voters probably punishing him for his role in the Astros sign a stealing scandal. Jeff Kent only gets 46.5% on his last year in the ballot. A-Rod gets 35.7% as Manny Ramirez is 33.2%. Uh, a couple of steroid users still on the ballot there. But Andrew Jones getting closer. That's the big takeaway from this for Braves fans. And you look at the progression for Andrew Jones. In 2018, his first year on the ballot, 7.3%. Still just 7.5% in 2019. Remember, those were some really crowded 
ballots as you were getting some of those players in the steroid era. And you had some people who voted for them, some people who didn't, some people who just left everybody off the list and those people who continue to send in blank ballots. And then we started to see some progression. 2020 went to 19.4%, then a big jump the next year to 33.9%. And then last year, 41.4%, which really started to make you think, okay, maybe he'll get there. And then obviously this year at 58.1%, you know, with four years left, they're starting to like it's a really good chance Andrew Jones could get in. I talked about Scott Rowland and the similar careers. Uh, Scott Rowland on the ballot got 10.2% his first year on the ballot, same year as Andrew Jones came in. Then he went to 17%, 35%, 52%, 63%. And then ultimately this year gets in with 76.3%. So, you know, and Andrew Jones on a very similar path to Scott Rowland, thinking Andrew Jones could potentially get in on the 2025 ballot, his eighth year on the ballot, maybe two more years. And I think he gets in, which is crazy to me that it takes so long for some of these players to get in. I get, you know, there were some years where some really full ballots, but for me, you're either a Hall of Famer or you're not. And it's just really, and I think Andrew Jones is a Hall of Famer, should have been in from the get-go just on his defense alone, not to mention the 400-plus home runs that he hit. And, you know, there's several numbers that I could give you. I want to just give a couple that Justin Toscano of the AJC gave out after the voting was announced. He said, Andrew Jones compiled 67 wins above replacement over his career, which puts him 11th all-time among center fielders. Eight of the players ahead of Jones are Hall of Famers. One more of them is Mike Trout, who's a future Hall of Famer. So Andrew Jones right there with the best center fielders of all time. And uh, J Justin Toscano also said Andrew Jones is one of only four players in history to win 10 gold gloves and hit at least 400 home runs. The other three were all first ballot Hall of Famers. So it continues to blow my mind why Andrew Jones is not in the Hall of Fame. Again, I, I can't take the Hall of Fame seriously until Andrew Jones is in there. You put in a player like Ozzie Smith, who is my favorite player of all time, strictly on defense, but you don't put in. Andrew Jones, who is, in my opinion, the best defensive center fielder of all time at a premium position. I mean, I just I don't understand why he hasn't been in already, why it's taking this long for people to come around. Maybe he made it look too easy. I don't know. But you can go watch his highlight reels. There are there are three or four catches you could go see right now that many players will dream of making. And I just don't know why he's not in, but hopefully he's getting there. And I think he'll eventually get in, whether he gets in, you know, on, on the ballot or whether he gets in on the uh, players era ballot afterwards, like Fred McGriff did. Uh, Billy Wagner is looking towards next year. I think Billy Wagner probably gets in next year and should be in as perhaps the best left-handed reliever of all time. Todd Helton was really close last year or this year. Uh, probably gets in next year. You look at the newcomers joining in 2024, Adrian Beltre. He should be first ballot. He probably gets in. Chase Utley, I think, should get strong consideration, but probably not in on his first year. He may eventually get in. Joe Maurer probably gets a good amount of votes, doesn't get in. Others on the list, David Wright, Bartolo Colon, Matt Holliday, Adrian Gonzalez, Braves legend. Uh, voters who probably wanted to punish Carlos Beltran this year may vote for him in year two, so I think we probably see him get a big boost, if not get in. If I were ranking players on next year's ballot, I'd probably go, you know, Beltre, Beltron, Wagner, Andrew Jones uh, in that order, and then Hel Helton, Utley, Sheffield. So I think Andrew's definitely on there and should be on many ballots and towards the top of many ballots. But I think there are at least seven names there in strong consideration for the Hall of Fame. But hopefully we see Andrew you know, gain another 10% next year and then maybe another 10% the year after that and finally get in. But I think you should be in. Let me know if you disagree in the comment section below. Would love to talk with you about that and let you know why you're wrong. But uh, Andrew Jones getting closer to closer and getting in. Why he's not in the Braves Hall of Fame? I still don't understand that. Uh, should certainly be in there as well. But he's getting closer to the big Hall of Fame. All right, next, we'll turn our attention to the uh, broadcast booth as the Braves are losing longtime play-by-play -play announcer Chip Carey. We'll also discuss Ron Acuna Jr. 
and his big home run in the Venezuelan League. We'll discuss that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL playoffs are here. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. Of course, you know, we're talking about FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers can join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. Very important. Make sure you use that code locked on. Fanduel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads, the player props this weekend. They got the Eagles as a two and a half point favorite, the Bengals just a one and a half point favorite over the Chiefs. Maybe we'll get some good NFL playoff games. Haven't got to watch too many of them, but sounds like those could be two good ones there. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet. To get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So a bit surprising news this week as we learned that Chip Carey is leaving the Atlanta Braves and taking the job in St. Louis. And in case you weren't aware, Dan McLaughlin of St. Louis, who is a former Play-by-play man in St. Louis stepped down in December after his third DWI arrest, uh, which opened a huge gig for a very prominent and storied franchise in St. Louis. So makes sense that they would go after Chip Carey, whose family has some ties there. Harry Carey called games for the Cardinals from 1945 to 1969 is obviously uh, Chip's grandfather. I'm going to get some names mixed up here, Chip, Skip, and all the Careys, but Chip will follow in his grandfather's footsteps, calling the Redbirds as well. Obviously, you know, Chip grew up in St. Louis. His father, uh, Chip Carey, Skip Carey, was there as well. Called some basketball games in St. Louis before he moved to Atlanta and ultimately became an iconic voice for the Atlanta Braves, one of my favorite announcers of all time. I'm sure yours as well. Um, got a book over here called Of Mike's of Men, written by Pete Van Waren. If you haven't read that before, you should probably go give that a read as a Braves fan, especially. It's a very good book. Talks a lot about uh, Chip Carey and his time, or Skip Carey and his time with the Braves, and also Pete Van Waren, who was great in a golden age of broadcasters for the Atlanta Braves. But Chip's been with the Braves the last 18 season, calling Braves games on TV. And love him or hate him, his voice has brought us some great moments over the years. And look, I'm kind of with some of you. I, I think his voice has you know, grown a little stale over the years. And I think it's time for a new voice. But, you know, it is sad. There's This will be the first time since 1976 that there's not a carry in the Braves booth. So I know a lot of you ex- expressed to me that you, you love uh, Chip Carey. This is a big loss for you. And I, I'm sorry for that. You know, as somebody who grew up listening to a lot of, of Braves games. You know, the, the voice that brings you that sound of summer is very important. Uh, and so I'm, I'm, you know, I do feel sorry for all of you who loved Chip Carey, loved hearing that voice all summer long. But I am ready for a new voice. I'm excited to see who's going to replace him. And that's the next obvious question here is who's going to replace him. You know, a lot of people have been saying the obvious Obvious replacement would be Ben Ingram, who's the radio voice of the Braves and I think quickly becoming one of the best voices in all of baseball. However, again, as somebody who enjoys listening to the game on radio, you know, working out in the yard, driving around wherever, I love to listen to the game on radio. I think it's one of the best ways to consume the game of baseball, especially you get a good announcer like Ben Ingram, who's so descriptive about the game and what you're seeing. And that's why selfishly, I hope he stays on radio because I think it's so unique to find somebody who's that articulate and descriptive and can do so on radio and bring the game to life like that in radio form. I don't want to see him go away from that side of things, but I'm sure he would do a great job on TV. And I'm sure, you know, he is one of the leading candidates that they would go after. He's also mentioned, I've had several of you, let me know this as well, that he has said before that he prefers radio. So 
I again selfishly hope he hopes he stays there because I don't want to miss that on the radio side of things. Jim Powell's great as well, could step in on the radio side. Maybe Jim Powell could do some TV as well. Mark Bowman mentioned that the Braves could go after, uh, or he mentioned that uh, Ben Ingram along with Tom Hart could be among the favorites to replace Chip Carey. Former Marlins broadcaster Rich Waltz has ties to some Valley Sports South execs, but Valley's financial woes could influence the decision. Mark Bowman sent that out in a tweet, and he's obviously uh, has his his ear to what's going on there as well. Tom Hart, you know, wouldn't be a bad call as well. I think he would be more of, of a replacement. Uh, I don't really see him as a baseball voice, but maybe I'm wrong. I see him more on the football side of things where I am used to seeing him. Uh, but he is a popular voice in the Southeast. He's covered the SEC a lot for ESPN over the years. Again, I think he'd be a nice fill-in. I would love to see what he could do, but not sure if he's a long-term fit there just because I don't I don't view him as a baseball guy. Um, but certainly wouldn't mind uh, hearing him You know, give it a shot. It's so close to the season. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they do some sort of committee throughout the year. Maybe let Ben Ingram do some games, Jim Powell. You know, maybe Tom Hart comes on to do some games. They grab, you know, somebody else that's already in the Bally network. But it's just so close to the season starting. You know, everybody's getting prepped and ready for the season. It's really hard to see them, you know, bring somebody in right now. I know the Cardinals are doing it, but they've had a search going on for a month or so. So you do a search right now for the Braves for a month, and we're in spring training. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they do some sort of committee in 2023 and then see how things shake out after the season and then perhaps, you know, sign somebody on long term. A lot of you have mentioned Brian Anderson, who is the play by play voice for the Milwaukee Brewers. Would love Brian Anderson. Obviously, he is a most one of the most sought after announcers for anything right now. Basketball, baseball, whatever. He is one of the hottest names out there in the broadcasting world so certainly would love him but i think you know from what i gathered my time covering the brewers for lockdown brewers i think he enjoys it there in milwaukee and they allow him to do all the other gigs that he has so i don't see that as a possibility but certainly you know express my feelings as all of you have i love brian anderson and certainly would be great um boog as well boog shambi I would love him, but he just took that job with the Cubs, which is a pretty nice gig. I don't think he's going to be leaving that. So, um, you know, those are some names out there as well. See some of you in the chat section. Ben Ingram, uh, Kate Harrington says Ben Ingram and Tom Hart would be the best bets internally. Um, And then see some others talking about Kate Chavers said would like to see Ingram. Uh, Braves in a one says, how about Jim Powell? Uh, Again, I mentioned him. I think he could certainly do it. Um, Kate Harrington also said we'd like to see a younger guy get a chance maybe someone with a little more analytically driven and I think that's where they need to go and where they should go is to get a younger voice somebody who is you know more as you said analytically driven that can throw that into the game I think Chip Carey had been starting to try to do that the last couple years I think you know friend core as well I'm trying to do that but yeah I wouldn't mind getting somebody a little bit more you know, advanced in the new age game of baseball, I think would certainly be a plus. All right, next we'll get into the Ronald Acuna Jr. update from the Venezuelan League where he went deep on Tuesday. And then we'll also talk about the Zips projections for the Atlanta Braves. We'll do that next. So in case you missed it going around Twitter on Tuesday night, Ronald Acuna Jr., Returned to the Venezuelan Winter League and went deep on a 3-0 pitch on a fastball right down the middle, one that he should not miss and did not miss. Unfortunately, I can't show you the clip here on YouTube, but I did retweet it out or quote tweet it if you want to go check that out. It's obviously all over the Twitterverse. But yes, it was a 3-0 fastball down the middle, but I think what's most encouraging when I see that is the fact that he was able to take that ball out to right center with ease. And that's something we didn't see him do a lot last year. It's what we've seen him do in the past when he's really going, but he took that ball and just shot it out to right center. Like it was nothing. And to me, that's very encouraging. It's a Venezuelan winter league game. It's a three Oh fastball down the middle from a guy probably throwing 88. 
but still just the the swing the approach the lift that was missing all good signs you know pointing towards ron acuna jr hopefully having a uh, another breakout bounce back rather year in 2023 certainly looking forward to that apparently some people did not like the celebration of acuna after the home run and just on all honesty it probably was a little much but you know from my experience watching the dominican winter league watching you know, the Venezuelan Winter League, that's pretty par for the course over there as far as celebration goes. I don't know that he would do all of that in a major league game, but, you know, when you're playing with your friends, you're playing from your hometown, you know, I can see him getting a, a little bit more animated and the celebrations being a little bit bigger um, than perhaps, you know, he would do in a major league game. But it was a little much. Some people took exception to it on Twitter. Is what it is. I thought it was fun and exciting. And apparently he's done playing uh, in the Venezuelan Winter League. He announced on his Instagram post after the game that he would be done. Um, retiring was a translation uh, that I plugged in from the Venezuelan Winter League. So I think he's ready to come back, get geared up for the upcoming season. Again, expecting big things there. Sounds like he's still not going to be playing in the World Baseball Classic, which is a bummer, but I get it from the Braves' perspective. Also, earlier this week, the Zips projections by Dan Zimborski Zimb uh, was put out over at Fangraphs, and he really likes the Atlanta Braves and what they got going. And you look at the projections for the Braves players and their lineup, and everybody is expected to have two war or higher except for the left, left field spot. So it's a very good lineup. It's a very good rotation. Max Freed, 4.8. Projected war, right 3.1, Strider 3.6, Morton 3.1. You know, in the outfield, you got Harris projected at 4.3, Acuna at 4.5, Olsen at 4.4 on the infield, and Riley at 5.1. And then the combination of Sean Murphy and Travis Darno 4.5. So, again, a very good team, as you would expect on paper. They're projected to have very good numbers and in the articles, Zimborski talks about the fact that the Braves, of all the contenders, probably have the highest floor because of their depth and just the talent that they have. So this is a very good team on paper going into the season. Obviously, you got to prove it on the field and get it done. But projection systems, you know, all like the Braves, like the Braves players to have big years. And I think, you know, looking at those projections, I think Acuna could blow that out of the water and be, you know, close to a 6 4 Player, Aussie Albies obviously has the opportunity to go higher than that as well. I think Matt Olson could go even higher, be a five-war player. So I still think there's some room to grow even more. I think Strider could be you know, over four-war as well. So as good as this Braves team is on paper, I could see reasons for them being even better than they're already projected. But as projected, and again, as Zimborski said, even at their floor, this is a really good Braves team on paper. All right, quickly just check uh, the chat section here. Joseph Greenwell uh, with the departure of the Carey family from Atlanta. Who would you like to see and take his place? We kind of talked about that. I think it would be a committee. I don't know overall who would be available in the Bally Network. And, you know, we talked looked at that tweet from Mark Bowman, the financials over there, who they could afford. Um, would love Brian Anderson, as a lot of people have mentioned. I think he's one of the best, but don't know what his interest would be. Look, I love Ben Ingram's voice, but I want him to stay on radio. Joseph Greenwell also said, I cannot see how they can vote for any player that have been caught not just once, but two plus times for steroids. You know, referring to Alex Rodriguez and Manny uh, Ramirez, I, I agree. Um, but there's some people who are just going to vote regardless. And, um, you know, they're going to look past the steroids. The steroid era just continues to kind of mess up the Hall of Fame voting process for me which is why i've kind of i don't talk about it a lot on here i don't really get into it that much anymore just because the steroid era has kind of muddied the waters and really messed up what i really enjoyed and loved was the mlb hall of fame but i just don't have that passion for it anymore because of how the steroid era kind of messed everything up braves n01 says andrew deserves to get in just on his defense alone i agree if you're putting ozzy smith in and ozzy smith got in purely for defense, then I think he got it, but Andrew Jones in purely for his defense. Um, Joseph Greenwell also said, I think they credit AJ with over 252 defensive run saves. I do think it's pretty 
ridiculous what it's up there for Andrew Jones in terms of defensive runs saved. Um, Dwight Cornell, Andrew deserves to be probably more than Scott Rowland. I was hoping that Chip would stay as the voice of the Braves. He will be missed. So there's a Chip Carey supporter right there. And I, I'm sorry for that, Dwight. I really do. Look, I know how important the voices of summer are that bring you those games every day and you grow a relationship you know, just listening to those guys. So I know there's a lot of Braves fans out there that are glad Chip Carey's gone. I saw you celebrating on Twitter, but there's those who who love him as well and enjoy him, and it's been a big part of their lives over the years. So I understand that. <clears throat> Marianne Smith, I hope Andrew does get in, and he's the best center fielder of all time. He is in with a lot of good players. I hate Chip won't be with us. I love him calling games. There's another Chip supporter right there and Mary Ann Smith, and I do agree, Andrew Jones, in my opinion, the best defensive center fielder of all time. Kay Chavers, a bunch of people stepping up for Chip Carey tonight, says he doesn't think anything there was anything wrong uh, with Chip. Uh, Brad Cleveland, not a fan of the Rich Walt uh, Walt's um, suggestion from Mark Bowman as his replacement. Austin Reed, favorite player growing up, gained 17 points this year, talking about Andrew Jones, on pace to get it soon. Keep up the good work. Jake, chop on. Thank you, Austin, for the kind words. Kate Chaver says, how about Peter Moylan? I would love to see Peter Moylan be in the booth more. He's not a play-by-play -play guy and won't be, but I would love to see him in the booth a lot more uh, with whoever the play-by-play -play voice is going to be. I liked when Moylan was in there. I thought he did a great job. Georgia Bulldogs, I see Ronald having an MVP season this year. He's just getting better every year. If he's healthy, just give me a healthy season of Ronald Acuna Jr. I just want to see what he can do fully healthy for a full year. Hopefully we get that in 2023. Georgia Bulldog Will says that bullpen is going to be really good. I'm glad you said that in that article on the Zips projections from Dan Zimborski. He he jokingly said that the Gwinnett Stripers might have the 20th best bullpen in all of MLB because of how deep this Braves bullpen is, and I certainly agree with that. Joe Me, Jake, why does everyone – project rally to be so bad on D I watch every game and he isn't an Arenado, but he doesn't seem terrible to me. He always rates out really bad though. Help me understand. This is something that I struggle with a lot as well, because the eye test tells me that Riley is pretty solid over there at third base. And it's mostly he, he, he grates badly because there's not a lot of side to side movement. He doesn't have a lot of range. I think he's great at coming in on the baseball. And there is one analytic out there that said he's not great on coming in, but I don't know where they're getting that data from because I think he's one of the best at coming in on slow rollers. But I will say he is not great side to side. There's not a lot of side movement that limits his range. And so analytics, you know, rate him poorly because of that lack of range side to side. But I agree. He's solid. Anything in his area, he's typically going to get to the arm. It is solid, and I think he's great coming in on the baseball. It's really just that side-to-side -side movement that that holds him back. Kate Harrington uh, alluding to that at well, that he lacks range. Um, Kate Chavers, Acuna is just trying to have fun. I agree. Look, this guy had such a frustrating 2022 season. I think he's just looking to get back and have fun and enjoy the game that he's playing. I hope we don't have this all year where people are getting on him for – for celebrating. This is a guy who lost the game for a while with ACL and went through, you saw it in some of the behind the scenes stuff in his recovery, just, you know, some depressing type stuff when you have something ripped away from you like that. And then a frustrating 2022 season where he just couldn't get healthy. I think this guy just wants to be healthy and have fun and play. And I hope nobody takes that away from him. Um, James Saunders, as long as Smoltz doesn't take over, a lot of Braves fans are not big on John Smoltz. I don't think he's not a play-by-play -play guy anyway, but I don't see him coming back to the Braves. He's already on the national stage. Um, Cord Cortana says, I can't see anyone else doing play-by-play -play calling. I think there is more to this story. Uh, I'm mad about him jumping ship. Look, he's going back to where he grew up, and – I get it from that standpoint. And I think he probably just wanted something different. You know, it's probably going to be his last job in his career. I think he's 57 now. So, uh, you know, going back to really where it all started uh, for his grandfather and where he grew up. So I understand why, why he's gone. Georgia Bulldog will. I'll miss Chip. Uh, but I, I believe Brian Jordan will be our play-by-play -play announcer. Uh, I hope that's a joke. No offense to, to you or Brian Jordan. 
Uh, Robert McClis- McCleskey, I like Ben Ingram and more than on the radio. I honestly like Ben Gr- Ben Ingram and Jim Powell. That was my favorite uh, radio combination. But like I said, I think Peter Mullen, I would like to see him get more of a color, color analyst role in 2023 and going forward. Dwight Cornell, I would also add that Brian Anderson would be a great replacement. I've heard him call numerous NCAA men's tournament basketball games, and he's exciting to listen to. He's Again, he's one of the hottest broadcasting names out there right now. Everybody wants Brian Anderson. Would certainly love him, but I just don't see it happening. Uh, Mary Ann Smith, I like Jeff and Peter to be calling plays, uh, games. I love them. Agree, but they're both color analysts. Neither one of them are going to do play-by-play, but I I like Jeff, and I I really like what Peter did last year. I want to see more of them. Joseph Greenwell, kind of off topic, but can we ban Joe Buck from broadcasting any Braves games? I do think Joe Buck is taking a step back from baseball a little bit, Um, but yeah, not not a big fan of Joe Buck. I never really have been, so I don't think we'll see much more of him calling Braves game. And then Kate Harrington, Ben Ingram to TV, and Grant McCauley on radio. I certainly would love to see Grant McCauley get some sort of boost out of this. Obviously, big fan of his. And mentioning that, he's going to be with us on uh, Thursday night, Friday's episode, as we do a mailbag episode for Lockdown Braves. So we'll have Grant McCauley on here. We can talk about that opening with the with the Braves play-by-play job there. Uh, so that'll be fun. Make sure that you listen to that later in the week. We'll record it Thursday night uh, as Friday's podcast. So have Grant McCauley on there. We'll have another mailbag episode. So make sure that you send in your questions for that. But that will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Thanks you as always for listening and making Locked On Braves your first listen of every day. Now for your next listen, go check out the Locked On MLB Prospects podcast where host Lindsey Crosby. Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. Uh, get over that 30-minute mark and words become difficult. But Lindsey Crosby is one of the best out there. He's a Braves fan. He's an Auburn fan. You should be a fan of his as well. Go give him a listen at Locked On MLB Prospects. Again, thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Make sure you go subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you give, get your podcast. Give us a nice review as well if you would. Again, appreciate all the support. We're over 4,000 followers on YouTube now. I really do appreciate the support, and that's great. Trying to get to 5K by opening day. And again, that will do it for this episode. Appreciate it as always for listening, and we will talk to you next time.